all, hey, Kate here with our art history introduction on Roy Lichtenstein. Have you ever read a comic book? Well, if you haven't, you should. Have you ever watched a movie about Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman? Well, comic books are where these characters got started. Back in the 1950s, comics books were a pretty big deal and artists didn't just use them to create stories about superheroes. They used them to talk about serious subjects like war and love. Roy Lichtenstein was born in New York in 1923. He became famous for his bright and bold paintings of comic strip cartoons as well as his paintings of everyday objects. He was one of a group of artists making art in the 1960s who were called pop artists because they made art about popular things such as TVs, celebrities, fast food, pop music, and cartoons. Although most known as a painter, he made over 5,000 different pieces of art, including sculpture, murals, prints, and ceramics. His paintings of comic strips were made to look like large comics, but instead of printing them on a machine, like comic books were, he used his fine art materials, like canvas and paint and paintbrushes, to imitate the style. Lichtenstein chose colors carefully to imitate the four colors of printer's inks. He also used Ben Day dots, a system invented to increase the range of colors available to newspaper printing. Look closely at his work. Can you see how the colors are clear from a distance, but look like tiny dots and dashes close up? Roy Lichtenstein didn't want to re reproduce comics, but rather use them as a parody to sort of poke fun at the whole idea of the comic book. Also, because I'm an English teacher, we have to talk about the word onomatopoeia, which is when a word actually sounds like the word it's describing. For example, let's look at one of Lichtenstein's most famous works, wham. When you say that word, it actually sounds like what is happening. A plane has hit an enemy, and that's the sound it makes on impact. Other examples we often find in comic books are pow and zap and bang. Can you think of others? If you ever go to an art museum, and I highly suggest that you do, his pieces are fairly easy to pick out. They usually use the primary colors black and white, and lots of dots and thick lines. Start thinking now about what word and phrase you want to use in your artwork. Huzzah!